Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Helen. I'm here at the desk and I'm gonna share with you some of the hikes we've done. Every single one of these hikes are within 20 minutes of the front door. You know, if you jump in the car and drive, some of them are seven minutes away. So you can go and get world-class hikes right here in town. If you don't trust me and you wanna go off the beaten path and find your own place, um, I did buy all these books. They're all downstairs in the, uh, in the little TV credenza thingy. Uh, so you can kind of dig through and look at all the different hikes in Georgia and find waterfalls and all that stuff. So there are hundreds more that I haven't done that you could get into, but I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on, I think these are some of the more popular hikes here, or most popular in this area right near the house here. Uh, and so we've done eight of them. I think I've done 10 total hikes because I've done a couple of them twice. Uh, but so we've gotten a pretty good sampling of what's here, what's in town. We've done it in the dry, we've done it in the cold, we've done it in the wet. Uh, so we've, uh, we've, again, we've gotten a really good sample set of what it would be like to, to hike here in, uh, in, in Helen. So I'm gonna take you through uh, the eight different places we went in chronological order. Uh, and then at the end, I'll wrap it up and tell you which ones I think you should do, uh, which ones were, were our favorite, kind of give you our, our take on them as I kind of jog back my memory of how we did this. Depending on what time of year you come, uh, even in the dead of the winter, I mean like today it's 38 degrees in February, but it's gonna warm up to 50. Average temperature here in the winter is probably 40, 45 degrees. So a light jacket and some pants uh, is what you'd need. Uh, but most of the time, most of the year, you're gonna hike in shorts, t-shirt, uh, and you may or may not need to bring water you know, because it does get hot here in the summer. So. I think if you're going to plan to do some hiking, bring some shoes that are appropriate for hiking uh, or buy some. Uh, my long-term plan is to have some shoes here that you could buy. You can use my Camelback. If you have one, bring it with you. Uh, but you can use mine if you'd like. It's in the master closet and the bladders are in the freezer. Just make sure when you, when you finish, clean it, put it back in the freezer. That keeps it from getting moldy. Uh, but you can go out there. We haven't seen any wildlife, but you can go out there without any issue. Um, you know, I, I, I well, we haven't found any bears or anything like that, uh, but there are, they are here. So you want to keep that in mind that there are black bears here in, in the mountains, um, that maybe you want to get some bear spray if you're really nervous about that. So shoes are the most important part, shoes and socks. You know, you want good quality wool socks if you can help it. And you want some decent shoes with some grip. You know, Waba hiked it in some, uh, you know, some moon shoes, some uh, some Adidas boosts or something like that. Um, didn't have such a great time with it, especially in the wet. Uh, so if you can help it, you really want to hike with some uh, with some decent shoes. Most of the hikes I did in the very beginning in the mountains here, I did in you know Nike Metcons, which weren't suited for it. You can do it in regular shoes, but it would be helpful to have some some um, you know some some hiking specific shoes with some grip. Uh, you. You, you don't need anything for like, you know, hard, hard terrain, but, uh, but it would be helpful, help you from stubbing your toe on a rock or something like that, or a root. Uh, so you can do most of these hikes without water. You know, it's nice to have a little bit. Uh, you can do it without, but you know, if you want to carry a bottle of water, that's kind of annoying. Like I said, you can fill up the Camelback. Chances are you're going to drink, you know, a half a bottle of water worth. Shoes, socks, choose your shorts or pants. Um, you know, maybe you, you, I don't wear sunscreen out there and I'm it's pasty white. So generally you're in, you're in, uh, in tree cover. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but if you can bring some shoes, then you'd be good to go. So the first hike was, uh, was Raven Cliffs Falls. Raven Cliff Falls, and that's an out and back. Uh, it says on here on all trails that it's 5.8 miles long. Uh, you don't gain a lot of elevation. Uh, now remember, when they tell you elevation gain, they're telling you um, net, I believe, gain, not gross gain. Uh, so when you, and I, I would actually recommend downloading the, uh, the, the app, all trails app, before you go out. And uh, if you notice, this here is pretty darn close to where we are. But the cool thing about all trails, this I paid for a membership, but you could you could just use the free account. See how it shows you your ascent, and then shows you your descent. Since this is an out and back, uh, and the app will tell you how long it took, what your average pace was, how many calories you burned, all that kind of stuff is super cool. Uh, but notice, Ravens Cl Raven Cliff, Raven Cliffs. <laughs> 
No, Ravencliff Falls. I can never get the pluralization of that correct. So our house is over here in Helen. Let's see. And so we're over here, in the, you know, near Valhalla. And the you know, start of the trailhead is right here. So this one, lots of water. You're kind of snaking around a, a river. Uh, not a lot of roots, not a lot of elevation. Uh, Kate did this one and killed it. Uh, the really cool thing about Raven Cliffs is the at the end, uh, you get the opportunity to go and see the falls, uh, which is really, really cool. The other thing I'd make sure, so when the trail ends at the falls, uh, you can actually climb up I would say about maybe about 25% of the way up. Uh, so make sure you go up there because you can really get into the falls and really see it. The first time we went out, we didn't do that. Uh, so make sure, make sure you go and do that and check that out. When you get in all trails, you can really spend some time kind of digging around, look at previews and read reviews and all that stuff. But I would say just go and freaking do it. But, but get the app so when you're out there, it's more fun, you know, especially if you're starting to hurt a little bit, uh, it's, it's more fun to know where you're at and, and how it's working. You, you, can, um, uh, you can look at you know, photos and things like that, but take, take the app with you. Second hike, which was really easy. This is the, I think the family hike to do. Uh, it's 2.3 miles total. It's an out and back. Actually in the summer, uh, Kate and Ryan went and figured out how to swim in the water down there. I don't know if it's, if it's uh, allowed or not, but uh, they were doing it. Some other people were doing it. Some locals are doing it. Uh, but this one is pretty much paved. So if you're looking for a challenge, skip this one. But if you have some young kids, I mean, you could take, uh, you know, as long as anybody who can walk uh, can do this trail. Really simple, really easy. It's pretty much, again, all paved. And then at the end, there's a payoff and that there's, uh, there's falls that you get to go check out and some boardwalk and stuff like that. You can, you can go down and, um, and really you know, dig into some scenic stuff and take some photos, things like that. Then the third hike we did, which was the longest hike, uh, this one we did in the wet. It was pouring down rain the whole day. Uh, it's, uh, it says nine and a half miles on all trails. Uh, it was 10 miles. Uh, and then when they give you the estimate of time, it says it took four hours and 28 minutes. It took us three hours. Every single hike we did, I think we got out there at like 8.20 in the morning. Uh, it was when we started our hike and we were always back by lunchtime, which was, uh, which was you know, nice to get, get a hike in, come back, hang out, make some lunch, take a nap. And then in our case, it was get to work. Uh, but this was my favorite hike. Um, this one is challenging because it's a long, long haul. Uh, and so it follows along Smith Creek. You got some narrow bridges and things like that. You're gonna, you're gonna have to sort of traverse over. Uh, and uh, some of them are actually, you know, probably 15 feet up in the air. Uh, so keep that in mind. But the, this takes you to Anna Ruby Falls. So if you look at the, uh, the trail here, this is the Anna Ruby Falls Trail, which is really just a little paved area. So you could drive all the way up Anna Ruby Falls Road, or you could choose to do what we did, which was hike through the woods following Smith Creek all the way up. And this is like one minute from the neighborhood. So the neighborhood entrance is right here. And this is where the, you know, this is where the, uh, the hike starts. Uh, but this, if you want to go out and get a workout, two, three, three and a half hour workout, four hour workout, depending on how fast you are, you could probably do it in two and a half, maybe, you know, low twos if you really, you know, if you jogged it. Uh, but this, um, this, you're gaining some elevation. You're, you're, you're going to be hurting. Uh, this is a full day's work uh, to do Smith Creek, but then you get to go all the way up to Anna Ruby Falls, which is awesome at the end. That was our, our third hike. And um, I think, um, you know, kind of, kind of put a hurting on us. Uh, Unicoi uh, Gap and Indian Grave Loop was the fourth. Uh, so Mike uh, Figuera and I did this one. Super challenging because of the elevation gain. If you look at the map here, uh, look this. Uh, this has some steep grades: 19%, 17%, 18, 22. You know, so you're gaining some serious elevation. And, uh, and you've got some pretty steep gradients, 23% grade, 25. So keep that in mind. If you're going up there, you're also starting at 3,000 feet. Uh, so, I mean, we're not in the Rocky Mountains here, but going from 3,000 to the, 
peak at uh, 4,000 feet. While you're climbing, it's a little bit more uh, taxing. So this goes all the way down. You, you have a couple of different ways you can go. You'll notice on the map, this is where having all trails will be helpful so you don't get lost. Uh, you do have to walk down a road a little bit to catch the uh, Rocky Mountain Trail. This is a, a loop. Uh, there's a little bit of an out and back section, but right from the get, right from the parking lot, you're climbing. So keep that in mind. And you're climbing, you're breathing, your your quads are burning. So it's a pretty nasty, nasty climb from the uh, from the get go. The fourth, uh, no, the fifth one we did was the probably the most popular. It's the number one rated on all trails. It's reasonable to do at all levels. So uh, you know you are going to climb. Your kids are going to complain if you do take them up there. But it's not as long a distance. It's two miles up, two miles back, uh, and uh, but it's the most scenic. It's the mountain you can see out the window here. I can see the top of it. Uh, Mount Yona is the you know, one of the highest mountain peaks here in the area, um, but it's uh, it's it's really close within 10 minutes out the the gate of the community to get to, uh, and you can stop and get some uh, get some cinnamon rolls on the way out because that's right down the street from there. It says that it's 1,400 uh, feet elevation gain. That sounds about right. There are some points there, 28% grade. This is where you know the kids are going to be complaining if you take them there, uh, because there's some really steep sections where your 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 you know hands on knees you know climbing up I can, I can envision that section right now lots of roots and stuff like that um, but there the climbs are short but you are climbing to what 3200 feet from a starting elevation of 1700 so you know you're climbing quite a bit you know to get up to the peak but then the road back down and there's also some easier ways you can go i would suggest stay off the road and stay on the trail it's more fun that way uh, but this is if you're going to do one hike you know i think this is the one to do uh let's see the sixth hike is it you know the sixth hike that i did this is me me and tota did this i almost had to carry tota out of there um, this was a 7.6 mile uh, this is at the same place, Unicoi Gap, as the Unicoi Gap to Indian Grave that Mike F. and I did. Uh, a little bit easier to start, um, but you got lots of climbing, lots of elevation gain, lots of change of elevation. Um, I think you get up to 4,000 or so feet. Yeah, 4,000. This is the highest elevation that I've gotten to. This is one of those um, the trails you go out and back, but this is part of the Appalachian Trail. You could hike to... Maine, if you wanted to, on this thing, or hike all the way to um, the start of the trailhead, the Appalachian Trail. Uh, but this is uh, this is one of those ones. I think I'd rank it a little bit lower. Not much to see. This is more of just a, a workout, a challenging workout, because you get eight miles in. If you wanted to do another two or three miles, you could easily add it to it. Uh, you could go out to Trey Mountain um, this way, and there's another. Um, Actually, it's a different, uh, it's not Trey Mountain, it's, uh, I can't remember wh where it goes out to. Trey Mountain's the other direction. Or you could turn it into a 16 mile ga you know, loop and go you know, way out. I think it's this one. So then if you want an easy, easy family trail, which is right here in town, right out front gate. Uh, so as soon as you go out the front gate, you make the first first left and that's the Hardman Farm Trailhead. It's two miles, it's one mile out, one mile back. You're kind of snaking around the uh, Chattahoochee River so you can see people you know, fly fishing and stuff in there. It's, um, there's no elevation gain, it's flat. You know, and so, you know, you see lots of kids, lots of, uh, you know, people out there just kind of catching a little, um, you know, a little, little, little walk or a little workout. Might be a decent place if you want to go out and do a couple mile run, you can go out and do this. Uh, but it's all paved. It's semi-scenic, but you're, you know, running around the, you're just snaking around the road as well as so you can hear cars humming by. So it's not, um, not, not super exciting is you're not out in the woods but if you did want to take the you know, if you have some you know three-year-olds just learn the walk you can you can take them out there and then the last one we did with pan darn near killed them was andrew's cove so andrew's cove goes um a decent amount of elevation gain there was a few there were a few steep graded sections 27 at yeah, 29 30 percent that's where Pan bailed. He, he made it up to 17, 18% grade, and then he bailed at the very end there. 
where we gained another, you know, three or 400 feet of elevation. But this goes to the same Indian Gap area that the Appalachian Trail comes to. Uh, not very scenic, uh, not a lot going on on this trail. Um, so, you know, I would pick this one as one of the, one of the lower ones, but it, it was reasonably challenging, kind of medium, medium looking, looking hike. So if I'm giving you some advice, you're coming here for a week, you're not gonna be able to do all of them. Uh, you're only gonna do a few of them, um, maybe one, two. I mean, if you're a big hiker, maybe you'll come and hike more and you'll go find some more challenging stuff, but you don't need my help. But if you're coming here, I would suggest doing at least one hike. If you're gonna do one hike, family or no family, just know that if you have some kids that aren't athletic or you're not athletic, the Yona Mountain's gonna be frustrating for you. It's gonna be hard. Uh, but if you're in, you know, reasonable shape, uh, if you can run a mile in, you know, seven or eight minutes, you know, you can, you can go and do Mount Yona pretty easily. I think do that one. It's close. It's in between here and Cleveland, so you can go grab some lunch in Cleveland if you want. Um, and it's uh, not super challenging from a trail perspective. You get to see a lot of different things. There's a lot of tree cover, normal walk through the woods. There's also a lot of like rocky stuff to climb up. And then of course you go up to the, to the, you know, the scenic area at the very, very top of the mountain. If you're afraid of heights like me, you won't enjoy it quite as much, but I think that's the one to do. Second one to do is, um, is Raven Cliff. Raven Cliff Falls, it's five miles, um, similar distance, similar amount of effort. Uh, you're gonna do it in like an hour and a half, two hours. Um, Kate did it, she's eight and um, she killed it. Kate's pretty athletic though, so um, depending on what you, you know, what, you know, how much your kids like doing outdoor stuff on whether you do that or not. Uh, but Raven Cliff, so the, the two hikes that I would do would be, would be the Mount Iona, then Raven Cliffs. Raven Cliff Falls, do, do those two, if you're gonna pick only two. If you need family stuff, I mentioned the Hardman Family Trail, super simple, really easy, you don't have to go anywhere, you just go right out the gate and then walk down the trail and you can walk back into Helen if you want to. Um, but I would do Duke's Creek. Uh, Duke's Creek is really easy to do if you want to, you know, if you don't, you don't want to bring hiking shoes or any, any gear uh, and you just want to go with some sneakers out there, go out to, go out to um, Duke's Creek. Uh, really awesome view. The other thing if you don't want to hike is you can go up to the top of Anna Ruby, which I showed you, which was part of the Smith Creek Trail. Uh, you can drive all the way up through Unicoi State Park all the way up to Anna Ruby. I think it's like three bucks or something like that you have to pay to go in that way and park in the little little national park and you can walk it's like a mile um, up a paved trail but if you really want to challenge you'll you'll do the you'll do the full thing so again family was dukes creek hardman trail scenic and sort of best overall mount yona raven cliffs Raven Cliff Falls, I don't know why I can't say that. If you want a workout challenge, um, I would do Smith Creek to Anna Ruby first. That's, that was my favorite hike out of all of them personally. Get to see a lot of everything. It's even more fun if you go out in the rain because you feel more like a real man. You're gonna want, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna want some hiking shoes, you're gonna want something with some grip to them. Um, so make sure you bring some Solomons or some Columbias or something like that. Make sure they feel good on your feet because you're doing 10 miles and you're gonna be out there for three hours or so uh, doing it uh, and if you want a, you know if you want a real cardio challenge go do the Unicoi Gap stuff uh, which is up uh, north of Helen on 17 it's still only 20 minutes away so easy to get to uh, but the Unicoi Gap stuff allows you to choose your distance there's certainly some other trails that I'm gonna like to go see at some point but I hope this gives you a good baseline a good guideline you're only here for six and a half days, so you know, you're not gonna be able to do all of them unless you just really love hiking. Uh, but if you're gonna do one or two, I hope this helps you make a choice. You don't have to waste it. Now you know exactly what to do.